how possible is it for a human being to be swallowed whole by a fish without being pieced? It, he wasn't digested. Three long days, he was vomited and he got up and dusted himself. If you are seeing my video for the first time, I discuss controversial Bible stories. And on today's episode, I am going to discuss the ridiculous story of Jonah, swallowed by a fish. You will find this Bible story in the book of Jonah, chapter 1. I usually avoid reading the Bible passages, the references, just to avoid elongating my video unnecessarily. So, because I know that many people are already familiar with this story. And if you don't know the full story or you have forgotten, you can always Google Jonah chapter 1 and read the entire story for full understanding. But then I am going to brief you, refresh your memory, you know, without reading it out. Jonah was a man of God from Hebrew. And he got a message from God to go to Assyrian city of Nineveh to preach, to tell them about repentance. And Jonah didn't want to go. He was scared because he already heard of all the kinds of atrocities that are being committed in Nineveh. He tried to argue, or he didn't have the courage, rather, to argue with God. And then he boarded a ship. Instead of going to Nineveh, he decided to go to Tashish to run away from God. Along the way, the journey didn't go as planned. Because, of course, nobody can run away from God. He sees you from everywhere. So there was a turbulence and the ship was about to capsize. But then you can uh, imagine that even in a Bible story, they included divination. They said that the crew in the ship casted a lot and it fell on Jonah. The Bible didn't say they asked God. No. The Bible didn't say they prayed when the ship was having the turbulence. They didn't stop praying. They didn't start fasting. And it was revealed to them that it, the problem was coming from Jonah. And then they brought Jonah up. Everybody was terrified at the turbulence. But Jonah was hiding beneath the ship. They brought him up. He confessed to them that he was trying to run away from God. And he demanded to be thrown into the water because he really didn't want to go to Nineveh. So he chose to die instead. So the people were reluctant to do that. It doesn't matter where you belong to. Human life is sacred. They were trying so hard not to destroy the life of Jonah. They were struggling to see if they could you know, swear their ship to the closest harbor, to the closest land, and get him removed from there. But they couldn't. The turbulence was much. The storm was much. So they eventually prayed, let not his blood fall on their head. And they threw him overboard. And that was where the worst part of the story was concorded from. He fell directly into the mouth of a whale. And um, the whale became the ship that carried him and swam from Tarshish back to Nineveh and went all the way for three days and vomited him <laughs> and vomited him on a dry land in Nineveh. You can read up the rest of the story. When he got up, he was angry with himself. He was angry with God, blah, 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 and stuff. You know, he went reluctantly to deliver the message God 
gave to him. And instead of God destroying the people of Nineveh as he promised, he decided to forgive them. And, and, and Jonah was like, why? Why would you forgive them? You made me look like a liar. I came to tell those people you said you are going to destroy them. And eventually you didn't. You know, go and read it up. And some other things that happened, he sat on a tree and the, and the worm ate up the tree, blah, 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 blah. Let me focus on Jonah being swallowed by fish. Let's forget about the, the you know, the icing on the cake. How possible is it for a human being to be swallowed whole by a fish without being persist? It, he wasn't digested. Three long days, he was vomited. And he got up and dusted himself and went into the city of Nineveh. You will tell me, God ways are not our ways. You will start telling me it was a miracle and all of that. This kind of miracles don't happen anymore, right? And even at that time that it happened, no other person, apart from the, pe the person that wrote this story, no other person agreed that this story happened or had any evidence. Even the person that wrote the story has no evidence to prove that this really happened happened. Some denominations actually agreed that this is a parable, that this story was just an analogy to discuss the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Fine. If it was believed to be a parable, they should tell us plain. We have many other parables in the Bible. Nobody is going to start arguing about those ones because it is categorically stated that these are parables. But this one is supposed to be a historical event you are telling us about the mightiness of God and the consequences of disobedience and all of that. Now, the esophagus of a whale is just very few inches. It cannot swallow a full human whole. I'm not saying that a whale cannot eat a human, but whale has teeth. It will bite you off in pieces like crocodile, for example, and then swallow you in pieces, in bits and pieces like that. But Jonah was swallowed whole. <laughs> oh God, I didn't mean to laugh. With the controversy going around the story, in 1927, there was a report about a man called James Bartley, who was also swallowed by a whale in 1891. He didn't do it intentionally. He was also in a ship. Then there was a shipwreck, or there was, you know, a storm also. Their ship had a problem, and he fell into the water. They thought he got drowned, you know, and was searching for his body after a while or so. On the following day, they came along still searching for his body. And then they found a dead whale around the place. They checked the whale and maybe and felt the, the whale was the whale died of constipation, swallowed something that didn't, you know, go down well. So they skinned the whale, opened the whale up and found James Bartley in the belly of the whale the following day. He was unconscious. His skin was already peeled off totally by gastric acid in the stomach of the whale, of course. If they didn't get there earlier than later, the man was already going. They rescued him. He was taken to the hospital. He was still breathing, but unconscious. I don't know the details of complications he had, but he was resuscitated in the hospital after a while. But he still died. He died many years later, though. Now, even this one that has evidence, people that saw it happen, Many people still don't believe the possibility that he was swallowed. They said 
this story was scooped up. This story that was reported by a national newspaper was also not even believed by so many people. Historians, biologists said that it's not possible and proved it with evidences and anatomy of a fish and a whale. And the implications of being swallowed and the possibility of surviving for hours in the belly of a fish. It's not just scientists not agreeing. The wife of the captain of the very ship that had the problem where James was in didn't believe the story either. It was her husband that was the captain of the ship. Reason being that the man survived and started touring countries and making appearances, you know, using this to make money, to tell the story of how he fell into the water, was swallowed by a fish, he was saved, blah, blah, blah. You know, he started making waves with it before he died, like 18 years later. Now, tell me how possible it really is for a whale to not just eat you, but also to vomit you. I don't know what you guys think about this story, but I don't believe it one bit. It's enough to tell me the story of Jesus dying and being resurrected. But to complicate matter with Jonah surviving the belly of a whale or in the belly of whatever big fish and being vomited it's too much for anyone to believe i just hope that the events happening in our own generation all the genocide all the technological advancements transgender issues and so many other things happening right now are being documented properly so that it can be compiled for the coming generations to read as their book of faith because I don't get it. I don't get some of these stories. I think I'm going to stop here. I just want to disclaim, as I used to do, that uh, this is not about fighting religion, fighting God, fighting Bible. I'm not fighting anybody. I am just stating the obvious. I am making my observations. When I was a child, I swallowed all of the stories. I was taught. I didn't have the capacity to ask questions. But now I am of age to answer for myself. I decided to begin to bring up some of these stories to see if there are other people that got confused by them the way I was. We can work minds. Tell me what you think about it. I don't have answers to this. If you have answers, give me. I have, I have made some other stories in the past and I got responses from different scholars, Bible scholars and institutions, you know, calling me to explain. One of them made a video a whole video in response to if we, uh, to something I spoke about on an Easter day about the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Made a story, tagged me, and answered the questions I raised. So if you have a defense for this, if you have explanations for this, the intention, my reason for making this video is to get opinions from people. Tell me what you think about this on the comment section and see you on the next one.